Hey, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to talk about NPM and JavaScript modules in the front-end side of web applications. First off, let me ask you a question. How many times have you stumbled upon the npm install command while reading the installation part in the documentation of a front-end library that you wanted to use in one of your projects? Unless you are not a web developer who had retired before the release of Node.js in 2009, the answer is probably all the time. However, at the first stages this command was essentially used to install the backend dependencies of an application such as Express.js, Socket.io or any other dependency and that actually can be quite confusing for developers who come from a backend background, more precisely Node.js developers when they take their first steps into front-end development because those dependencies are built in a way that they work only in a node environment. So, if you are a beginner, you learned that in order to use a library such as jQuery for example, you either need to download the library into your local project folder, or use a link that points to a hosted version of the library in a content delivery network, aka CDN. Even if this approach works fine, it still has some flaws which are Updates to the libraries have to be done manually, so you have to always keep track of any release of an update or a patch of every single library that is being used in the project. Pollution and possible collisions with the global namespace. It requires the library to be kept as part of the code repository, therefore it will gradually fill with third-party libraries, while instead there should be a file which lists the dependencies of the project along with version numbers, so when a developer starts on the project, they should install the listed dependencies before running it. A module is a chunk of code separated from the main application's code. It's a file that contains a set of functions that are supposed to solve a specific problem. The separation of that part of code is very beneficial for the development of an application. A couple of the main advantages are Cleaner and more manageable code, which makes it easier to read and debug each set of functions of an application instead of a huge file with thousands of lines of code. Reusability Usually a module solves a certain problem, therefore the module could be used to solve that same problem in a different application which saves time, effort, and cost. Node Package Manager aka NPM You can think of it as a huge online store or registry of libraries, packages, modules, you name it, pushed by JavaScript developers and teams from all around the globe. So, let's say you created a module and you want to share it with the world. Well, NPM is the right place for that. With that being said, to create a project which is going to include npm packages over the course of its development, we need to do the following. First off, we need to create a folder, and within it we need to execute the npm init command, then provide some information about the project. Now, as you can see, a new package.json file has been created with all the information we have just typed in the command line. Now, let's say we want to include jQuery in enemy.js to our project. To do that, we have to use the npm install command. As you might have noticed, a new property has been added to the object which is dependencies. It's an object that includes the names and versions of the dependencies used in the project. In addition to that, if you look at the project files, you'll see that a new folder has been added. The node modules folder contains all the installed dependencies. Now, let's say you work with someone else on the same project 
you want to send them the code you're working on. To do that, you just simply send them all the files with the exception of the dependencies folder. In this example, it's the index.html, functions.js, style.css, and package.json. Now, all what your team member needs to do to get the dependencies that you have used in the project is to run npm install in the command line and npm will do all the work. Now, as you can see, the node modules folder has been created containing the necessary dependencies. Lastly, notice that there is a symbol on the left side of the dependencies versions. The caret symbol tells npm to look for the latest version of the dependency, regardless of the mentioned version. So, let's say you work with version 1.0.0 of a certain library. Once the user installs the package while a new major version of the library has been released, they will get the newest version instead of the one that you are working with. So they will get 2.1.1 or 3.1.2 for instance instead of 1.0.0. .0. On the other hand, let's say you want other developers to use the same major version as yours, but they can use a different minor release of the dependency which includes bug fixes and patches. Then, you need to use the tilde symbol instead. This way, users can work with the version 1.2.1 or 1.3.0 of the dependency, for instance. Now, say we want to use AnimeJS in our project. To do that, we just simply use a script tag to import the library. And there we go, it's pretty simple. However, things can be quite complicated. Let's install a library called Charming.js. Now, if we take a look at the documentation, they say that in order to use the library, we need to use the require function. So, let's add the script tag pointing to the library. Then, use the require function and see what will happen. As you can see, a couple of errors show up in the console. If you are a Node.js developer, then you probably know why. If you are not, then here's why. The reason behind the errors is because some npm packages are built only in a Node.js style, if we will, even if they are meant to be used in the front-end side of an application. That basically means that there are some parts of the code within the library that the browser doesn't recognize. Module, which is included within the Charming GS library in require, happen to be a couple of functions that work only in a node environment, and that's where bundlers such as Browserify, Webpack, and Parcel come in handy. A bundler is basically a piece of software that takes each one of your project modules and transforms them into a single file or more if it's needed. This, as a result, doesn't only make splitting code into modules beneficial in the development phase, but also makes the project better in the distribution form since the front-end part of the application will be sending less HTTP requests to get the libraries instead of creating a multitude of requests which hurts the performance of the website and so the user experience. I'll end this video here and we'll continue with a tutorial covering one of those bundlers in the next one. So make sure to subscribe to not miss it and I will see you then.